everyone, and welcome to Behind the Nail Pros for the May issue. We're so lucky to have Sam Biddle back with us again to do the nails. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much for asking. I'm, I'm really excited. This is a nice shoot, a very nice shoot. We had um, a good time pulling this together, and um, it all started with the nails, of course, being the stars. Tell me a little bit about how you came up with this design, because you really presented it to me. Um, well, we were going to go for the whole bohemian, maybe little retro acid trip look, and um, this um, this suited it, and it's a, a real multicolored um, nail behind, but then the detail over the top. It's the whole butterfly effect, a real close-up of the butterfly wings, so it, I think it just suits the whole feel of the, the look, and of course the model as well. Yeah, the real key to the design was in the final details, because really what it looked like before then was just color splattered across the nail. But tell us how you began. Um, I know you were working with a little bit of a challenge because her nails were real short and real flat. They were really flat and wide and, and um, it, although it was easy putting the forms on, I thought it would be um, simplest to just pull the nails out, get the shape uh, in just a clear gel. And it, I wanted to also show that this is a look that you can do on a rebalance or you can do it on somebody's natural nail. You don't have to inlay it into the design. So we, we literally just sculpted out the, the nail with some clear gel, filed it so that we had a nice finish and then we went straight in with some more gel and worked over the top of that. We talked about wanting an oval shape or almond shaped nail um, for this cover. Are there any challenges and how do you overcome them when you're dealing with very flat nails? Yes, um, that's a really good question. Uh, flat nails, you know, we sometimes it's better to taper the nails if the nails are quite flat and it is always hard to get that arch at the back. Um, the almond nails, the, the key is to actually shape the nail on the sculpting form. So rather than pulling out the nail as a square and filing the almond in, if you actually pull the nail out um, and get your shape down on the sculpting form first. And make sure that you file the underside so that you get that extra taper. You're, you're creating an illusion, so you're leaving the bulk at the stress area, but you're bringing the nail right up to, a, to more of a point uh, rather than a flat around, if you like. I imagine you're saving product too, because if you pull out the nail in, in a flat square shape, say, and then filing it all off, it's a lot of extra product that perhaps is being wasted instead of sculpting it in the right shape to begin with. Yeah, that's a, yeah, absolutely. That's a fair point as well. Um, yes, definitely. And, and I think sometimes it just it helps you focus your mind onto what shape you're doing, and then it makes sure that you, you're putting your arch in the right place to suit that nail shape as well. So once you finished filing and refining the nails, you went in with these beautiful gel paints. Tell me a little bit about those. I am so excited about the gel paints. And it's it's reasonably new to the industry, and I think we're going to see a lot more of them come up. They work, they're forgiving like gel, which means that you have more work workable time, but you're using them like paints. So um, you can really get your brush strokes in there. You can really get it nice and flat. And it just, they're highly pigmented, so they're going to mix really well. So the colors I've used on this nail, I've actually mixed those colors up myself from the primary color collection. So, which is great, you know, because it means that, that, that my, my palette is endless. But they are phenomenal to use. I, I can't tell you. I've, I use them in everything right now because they're just, they're just so easy. And, and one of my students says they're very forgiving, very forgiving. It makes an artist out of everybody. And I was just going to say, it is really making you into an artist with taking your palette and mixing the colors that you want and really giving you the ability, like you said, with brush strokes. I think you mentioned earlier that the brush strokes, for example, in an animal print uh, pattern will really enhance it and make it look like fur. Yes, and it's not something that you'd think that you could do with gel. You know, normally gel is just one flat color, and we're now adding dimension and depth to uh, gel nails, which is which is fantastic. We're we're doing something with a gel that we would only think about doing with a paint. But what we're doing is we're saving ourselves a whole bunch of time because with the paint, you know, we have to layer the paint, wait for it to dry, but it's also those brush strokes. It, it, it does take a little bit more time and a little bit more of a, a skill and some eye. Whereas with the gel paint, it, it, do you know, it does it for you. I don't, I don't know how, it's magic. It really is fantastic. It's great. You painted it the, all different colors mm -hmm. um, with a seemingly no real rhyme or reason, just whatever seemed to go together. 
but then the real key, like I said before, came to with the detail. Well, w- what I did was, I mean, the colors that I placed on there, they, they were wide enough for when I did put the detail on, um, each section had, had its own sort of pattern. Um, I put the rainbow color down. Then we put a, a shimmer over the top of the nail cured that and then we cured it with a gel polish top coat I buffed the surface of the shine off and then I went straight in with some regular acrylic paint and I used um, the nail art pen for that because that gave me some really thin lines and with shoots like this you haven't got an awful lot of time so if I was going to use a brush I wouldn't necessarily have all the time to do the detail so I used the nail art pen we dipped it literally in some normal water-based paint and then we just went straight over the, sur- the buff surface so it was very easy. Did you follow any patterns or did you do this all from memory? It was all from memory because um, I left my patterns in my suitcase but uh, no it was all from memory and the ba- if you look at the design on the nails that the, the patterns are actually the same and really I was I was taking a good look at some butterfly wings and taking the basic patterns from there and then imagining that I'd zoomed in. So, for instance, the yellow section would have had these big loops, um, and then maybe the blue section would have had tiny little dots on. So, you know, I I, I was going with, with what I had on the nail. And I think if you do that and you allow yourself to be a little bit more creative, the, the, it just flows naturally, and, and you become more relaxed about it. When you're starting to follow a pattern or a piece of paper where you've drawn it out, I think sometimes you get yourself into a bit of a tears. So tell me a little bit more about this calligraphy pen because I've never seen it before used with nail art. Um, it is uh, it's specifically designed to be used with a water-based paint. You you can still go ahead and use it with ink. Um, that's what you know originally we all used a calligraphy pen for. But uh, I wanted something that a nail technician could use in the salon with her paints that she has now, and she doesn't have to keep dipping her brush every five minutes. You could dip that nib into the paint and do three or four nails. Um, and it gives you a thick line or a thin line. You can color in with it. So it's a great little tool to have in in, in the salon. But um, it also means as a nail tech, if you're not very good with a striping brush or a thin detail brush, this works like a pen. So it, it, again, it just sort of helps you build your confidence in nail art. So it's a good little tool to have. And you saw how quick it was to do that design. It didn't take minutes at all. In fact, that was the quickest part of the whole of the whole set, really. Once you finished with the calligraphy pen, how did you finish off the nails? Uh, literally uh, added a tiny little bit of gold pigment. I, I diluted that down with some water and, and then with a brush, we just added some detail. And that just makes the background yellows and um, oranges pop through. So um, it just it just really brings everything together nicely. Once the gold pigment was on there, then I top coated it again with some gel polish top coat, which I think has a, a just a nicer shine to it. And uh, we cured that and we were ready to roll. That was it. The nails turned out so great. Honestly, they really stand out. I mean, even when we were just taking test photos while you were doing the nails or with the model, I mean, they are clearly stealing the show here. So uh, my hat's off to you for doing such a wonderful job. Thank you very much. That's That's kind of you to say. I do like them. They are one of my favorites this year. Well, I know you're about to get on a plane and head back across the pond. So have a safe flight. And thank you so much for joining us once again. It really is always a pleasure. You're very welcome. And thank you for being so welcoming. 